When we first become interested in model railroading, we're generally interested in locomotives, freight cars, passenger cars, things like that. In time, our attention turns more towards the layout itself and the scenery, and an important part of the scenery is trees. Now here's a photograph of a particular type of tree that uh, I'm going to model. You can see that it's a tall tree, skinny, and the lower half of it doesn't have any branches. So a lot of trunk is exposed there. And at the bottom, there's a lot of scruffy looking uh, uh, branches. Some parts stick out a little further. There's some, little, there's some light showing through the, the tree itself. Over here on the left, we see that the branches on this type of tree actually go up. Uh, some trees do that. This one on the right does the same type of thing. But this is what we're going to model is this one here. So again, about halfway, it tapers towards the top, bushy, but you can still see light through it. So we're going to start by talking about how to prepare the trunks for our pine trees. When I talk about pines, I'm not talking about a particular type of fir tree, just an evergreen the, the way you do it, the color it's going to be, and everything's going to depend upon a lot of what you want to model, what's in the area you're modeling. I start with one half inch square chunks of balsa. These are about uh, oh, 14, 15 inches long. I just use my X-Acto knife and taper them down and round them out a bit. After I've got it rounded, I go over it with uh, a saw blade. This is a saber saw blade. And what I'm doing is I'm really gouging up the trunk. You can see that there, putting a lot of gouges in the trunk. This is going to give our uh, uh, detail on the trunk. After that, I go back over with an X-Acto knife, and I make some of the gouges quite a bit deeper. I, I break up some of those long lines so that it doesn't look like long pieces, but so it looks more like actual bark best way to determine what bark looks like, go find a tree of the kind you're going to model and really look at the bark. Look at its color. Look at its texture. Try to take photographs of it. If it's some place where you don't live, try to find photographs of it. Google provides all kinds of images for us to look at. After you've got the grooves in there, you take some fine sandpaper and just lightly sand it. We're not trying to taper it at this point. We're just getting rid of any grain that's on it, any little little fuzz, getting that fuzz off. And there, you can see what it looks like, and it's ready to paint. Now, as to the color, this is a, a type of pine that's very common. A lot of pine looks like this, very light gray color. So you may want light gray, you may want uh, dark gray. Uh, most evergreens have uh, either very dark gray or light gray colors. Some have brown, and I like a little bit of brown. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by painting the whole trunk with burnt umber. Burnt umber is a very dark, almost black, brown. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a thin coat on. We're going to make sure we get it down into those grooves. That's what we're really trying to do. If you need to add some water to it to thin it down, that's okay. If you've got black paint, go ahead and paint your, your trunk black. All this is going to do is just provide the shadows around our bark, and that's what we're doing here. Try not to fill in these uh, crevices and cracks that you put in there. But just put a light coat on, just enough to cover it, but not enough to really fill those in. Now, I'm going to start with Apple Barrel Brands Dolphin Gray, and I'm also going to use another shade of gray, a little darker. This is Folk Art Brand Medium Gray. Now, don't go look for these particular colors. These are just what I happen to have. You just want a light gray, maybe a little darker gray. And for a brush, I want a small, stiff brush. Don't use a soft one for this. Use a stiff one. And what we do is we bring a little bit of that paint onto the brush, and then we get most of it off because we're going to use what's called a dry brushing technique. And what we do is we brush across the grain of the wood. Now this uh, dark gray, 
you can hardly see it on there. So I'm going to switch to that lighter gray in order so that we can actually see what we're accomplishing here. Now here when we look at a close-up we can see how with small amounts of paint on our brush brushing across this we can really bring out uh, the, the detail of the bark itself and those crevices that form the shadow relief. That's very important. That's what we want to do. We want to continue to work around the bark of the tree, rotating the trunk of the tree. We always want to apply very small amounts of paint. Don't get in a hurry with this. If you put too much on, you'll fill in those cracks and lose the effect of uh, the work that you've done in creating the bark texture. So we just want to continue on around. And this light gray is very common for a lot of different types of uh, uh, fir trees. I'm going to refer rather than to evergreens or firs or things like that, I'm just going to refer to them as pines. Uh, where I grew up in California, the, the big trees were redwoods. I grew up at the base of the redwoods in the sequoia, so that's what looks right to me is uh, trees that have that reddish, uh, reddish brown color. But most people uh, model trees that have a lighter color, a more of a gray color for the trunk. So that's what we're showing here. One thing I do uh, on my tree sometimes, even if I'm going to use the darker colors, I'll put a lighter color on like this. Then I'll come back over with something like Folk Art Teddy Bear Tan. Terrible label, but that's what this is. It's great paint. And uh, you can see the color of it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from my light gray. I'm going to switch to using that Folk Art Teddy Bear Tan. Again, just picking up small amounts of it and brushing never up and down the tree, but across the tree. And see, by applying this over that light gray, it gives me a lot of variation in the colors. And that's one thing I like to use, is I like to use, rather than just one color, I like to use a lot of variety of colors, small amounts of colors, and uh, applying them in layers or blending the colors together one way or the other and just continually working across the the surface of the the tree trunk like this you don't want to get in too big a hurry doing this if you get in a hurry you, you tend to make a mess of it and these are foreground trees we're talking about we're not talking about background trees so we certainly want to take the time uh, needed in order to uh, really do a good job on these Doing trees is uh, hard to do. Uh, just, uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago in the hobby in which uh, lichen was the standard, just clumps of lichen on something. So here's what the truck texture, then the color of the tree trunk looks like after we've done uh, putting the color on. Starting at the bottom and just going all the way up to the very tip top of the tree. Again, don't be in a hurry. Try to do your best on this, because this tree is going to be there for a long time. I've got trees that I built 35 years ago. Here's our tree trunk. Notice it's long and skinny. That's a very important part of our trees, that they're long and thin with pines. Yeah. Other trees are thick. Pines aren't. So what we're going to do, I've got that square area down at the bottom that wasn't painted. Uh, so I can hold on to it, and we're going to saw that off. This particular saw is one I use for roughing up the bark. It's not, it's so old, it's not very much good for cutting through this balsa anymore. It's pretty dull, but it's great for distressing uh, balsa to make for uh, tree texture. So anyway, we're gonna, I'll eventually get cut through here. There we go. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to take that trunk and we want to put a toothpick in it. Now I painted this toothpick black so you could see it. And it's only half a toothpick. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in the bottom. You can use a little hand drill. You can get one of these from Black & Decker. Pretty cheap little drill. Uh, really handy. This one's just the right size. This bit is just the right size for uh, toothpicks. Now, if you want your trees to be mounted permanently, glue this toothpick into your tree. If you want it removable, do it like this. When you mount it in your scenery, uh, 
when you're ready to move or something or if you want to save your trees you can just pull them off like that so let's see this one is about no, 13 or 14 inches long so that's about 70 75 feet in HO a pretty good sized tree now redwoods are a thousand feet high probably so it would be small but it's it's good enough for our purposes now we're going to talk about the limbs and the foliage itself use this material that's available at Michaels. It's called Caspia and this is the natural color. Uh, when you go and you go to buy this, if they don't have it in this light color, uh, just go ahead and buy whatever color they have and then you can spray paint it. In fact on my trees I actually go ahead and spray paint it a dark green anyway. But we're going to start with just using the natural color itself. This is what the material looks like. Now it's got flowers on it and we just want to trim all these little branches off of the trunk of this material. We want to trim big ones. Try to trim it as big as possible, but you're going to end up with a lot of small ones. The big pieces are going to be at the bottom of the tree. The small ones are going to be at the top of the tree so that we have a taper. What we're going to use for glue in this next segment is matte medium. I don't use it full strength. I mix it one part matte medium to five parts of water. I keep it in a jar like this and I just keep it well shaken. What we do then is we get our foam. Now my foam I use a variety of colors. I don't buy just one color and use it. I buy like four different colors of green and mix them all together. You dip the uh, little sprig of material into the matte medium for a few seconds. Then hold it over your foam and just sprinkle your foam onto it. Just as simple as that. Now this is the preferred way I've seen most people do is They do it this way with the foam. I don't actually use the foam for my layout, but uh, to show you how most people do, I'll show you this way. So after that one is done and you're setting it aside and it's starting to dry, you take the next uh, little uh, sprig do the same thing. Just set it into the matte medium for a little bit, shake off any excess moisture that's there, and sprinkle some foam on. You can put the foam uh, all the way around if you like, or you can put it just on one part. Either way. So here I'll go ahead and put it on the back, okay? And then just set it over on this wax paper, let those pieces dry. Now this is the way I actually do mine. I use Tester's dark green and I spray all of the Caspia this dark green. So you just take it out in the garage and uh, get your spray can and just uh, spray it. Make sure you spray it completely. Take the time to do this well. And you can do a whole large bundle of this in a hurry. This really speeds it up. Uh, which is one advantage to this, but the other advantage is I just really prefer it with the dark green. Now here's our trunk material. We've made our trunk, we've colored our trunk, and we're going to be drilling some holes in it. And uh, for our holes we want to start about halfway up, and I'm going to use that same size drill I did for uh, putting the toothpick in the bottom of the trunk. Uh, just drill a hole in there and I'll show close up how this is. You just drill through, drill all the way through like that. And while it's drilling, pull it out, and drill another hole. You just want to keep working your way up the tree. Now, don't go too far up with this large drill. This large drill is fine for these very bottom branches, but your top branches are much smaller and they're much lighter, so you need a much smaller hole. But we'll drill several holes in here just to get us started with this so you can see what's involved here. You can use an electric drill even on the upper branches. Uh, when I sit down and actually go to produce these, I take the time to put a very tiny drill bit in my drill press and actually use my drill press for this. So after we've done this, we take uh, the painted uh, foliage after it's dried we break off all the stems. Try to break them off as large as possible. We can always uh, trim them down if they're large. And down at the bottom, that little bit where I was hanging on to it doesn't have any green paint on it. Well we can break that off and use that. Or I've got this section here it didn't get much paint on it at all. I'm just going to break off several pieces of this an inch or so long 
to use as the type of branches that are at the bottom of pine trees. Uh, these are dead limbs, uh, widow makers. Uh, these are the type of things that fall and hit loggers when they are chopping away at the tree. It'll break some of these old uh, dead limbs off and they fall down and kill them. That's why they call them widow makers. But these uh, old dead limbs are just right around the bottom of the tree and, and almost all pine trees have this if it's of any age at all. The type tree I pattern my trees after is a ponderosa pine. Has a nice long skinny trunk. A lot of foliage, bushy foliage up towards the top. And here you can see what these pieces look like. We don't we don't need to cut them off. We can just break them off because old dead trees just break off easily. And if you want to keep these in here permanently, which is what you'll do when you build them, you want to put these in with glue. But I just put them in there just so you can see how that was done. Now I'm going to work up at the top of the tree. And when I actually model these, I start at the top and work my way down. And what I'm showing there is as we go down, the branches get wider and wider. Narrow at the top, broader at the bottom. So right up here at the top, I'm going to be drilling some holes. And you can see with this drill, that's almost as big around as the tree trunk itself. So that won't work. So I'm going to, I'm cutting off some little chunks there. I've got some little tiny chunks there. And those are very fine. The branches are very fine. So we need a very small drill to drill the holes in here. So just take one of these and just break off a bunch of these little ones for at the top. We go through a bunch, and you sort of want to be able to pick and choose from what you have. You can even save that stem there, and that stem can be used as a, a tree on the backdrop, a dead tree. Now here, I've got this little tiny drill bit. I had my finger there so you can see how big it is. And we start right at as close to the top as we can, just drilling these holes in. And each time you drill a hole, go a little further down the trunk for the next one, and rotate the trunk a little bit. You don't want these in lines from top to bottom. You want lots of variation. Try to drill as many holes in this as you possibly can. The more holes you have drilled, the more limbs you'll be able to put on. The more limbs you put on, the better it's going to look. When I first started doing these, I tried to skimp on the number of limbs, and I discovered you got to put a lot in. So you got your material there. Now some people put the limbs in like this with the flowers hanging down. I prefer it with the flowers hanging up. It's just the way it looks best to my eyes. So I turn it around and put it in like this. You can use tweezers for this, but for right now I'm just using my fingers. And you got to locate one of those tiny holes and stick it in. Now what you really want to do is you want to put a little drop of Elmer's glue on there, of course, so when you put these in here they stay in place. But what you find is those little holes close up pretty quick. And it's actually pretty hard to find holes uh, to, to put these in, even though you drilled a bunch of them there. Now I put the first ones in there without using Elmer's glue, just to make sure that the drill that I was using was the right size. So now I've got some Elmer's glue. I've got it on there on a little piece of paper. And I'm going to go back and start sticking it into the holes again. This will hold it in there. Now. It doesn't matter how long these are. You want to use short ones, not to waste the long ones. But we're going to go back and actually trim most of these up at the top to make it shorter anyway. When you start looking for those holes, you're going to find they just disappear on you. Maybe on your big screen TV you can see them, but uh, I have a hard time finding them. So what happens when that uh, you do have a hole that you can't find or is too small? Just take your drill and stick it back in there, worm it around a little bit again, and open it up again. You want to walk slow, work uh, slowly and carefully doing this. Don't be in a big hurry. This is an excellent thing to do while watching TV. You can, you can build trees. If you keep these materials, get a few trunks already and drilled, or make a project one evening of drilling just trunks. The next evening, have a nice, neat little stack of uh, the trunks there and have some of your foliage all ready to do and just do it while watching TV. You can get an actually large amount accomplished. 
So we're doing these little tiny ones up at the top, and as we go down the tree, we're going to use larger and larger. And here shortly, I'm going to have to resort to using tweezers because just can't do this with uh, by hand. And once again, I just can't find a hole. Sometimes you'll find there's room for a hole, so just keep your drill handy. Drill another hole. Notice I'm keeping my thumb right there where that is, so I can find that that hole again. There we go. So you just want to start at the top, work your way down using progressively larger and larger branches. Now we don't want this to be shaped like a triangle. We don't want it to look like a, a Christmas tree or one of those uh, uh, fake Christmas trees, little model Christmas trees that you can buy. Uh, it's not a triangle. It's, it tapers at the top, but it's pretty uh, bushy all along the stump. We'll talk a little bit about that more later. Now down at the bottom, now this is not at the bottom of the trunk, this is halfway down. This is where I already have those holes drilled for the, the dead limbs. You can take some of your big ones and just push it in there. And if you let it dry, uh, you won't keep knocking it around. What I'm doing here in this video is I, I have to keep readjusting these because uh, as I'm working on these things and showing you, I keep bouncing into it. So here's those dead limbs. We're going to go ahead and stick those dead limbs in. Very important detail to put those dead limbs in there. You may not think you need them, but you really do. Now there's how that limb looks upside down, like a lot of people like to have it. I like to have it this way, with those uh, uh, little leaves uh, pointing up. It, it looks better to me. Now on some trees the limbs go up, some trees the limbs go down. When that's the case, drill your holes at an angle. The particular type of tree that I do, uh, the limbs are almost straight out, so that's uh, what I do here. Okay, we got one in there. I'm going to try to squeeze another one into that same hole from the other side. Sometimes you can get away with that, sometimes you can't. Okay, so anyway, this illustrates how we start at the top with big ones. We're going to trim those later, work down to the larger ones. Small ones at the top, big ones at the bottom. Don't make it straight like that. Come up and then taper over like that. That's what's going to look the most realistic. Okay, now here's one I've got all done. This one's all done. I've got uh, tapered at the top, bushes, lots of branches all the way through. Down at the bottom I've got some uh, dead limbs. Pretty good looking tree just the way it is. And what do we want to do is we can always go and trim this. Uh, I use some small scissors. Trim this lightly. But some of these branches just stick out a little too far and you want it to have a certain contour. So just take a few minutes. After all the time of preparing the trunk and gluing these limbs in here, you can certainly take a couple of minutes and be really careful and selective about trimming it the, to get the shape that you want to have. Very important to do this carefully. Okay, so here at the top, uh, we need to address that. Here it's close up. Now some people will take that top and they'll just drill a hole in at the top and stick one little sprig of stuff in. To me that looks like a feather sticking out of the top of the tree. It never looks good to me. So what I do instead of drilling a hole up there at the top is I actually glue these into place. So I'm just going to take some of our glue. This is Elmer's. And Elmer's is good all round purpose glue, but it's not perfect. It's just not strong enough to really hold larger ones. If you're working with a small tree, you can do this. But what happens when I put these on, I can get one on there, and this would work if I'd, if I'd let that one dry and then come back and put another one on. But I don't like to do it that way. I try to do them all at once. So I end up knocking most of them off. Now I'm not showing you this close up as I'm doing this because 
uh, I just can't keep it focused well enough so you just have to bear with me here we'll show you a close-up in a minute of how this looks so I'm not putting these in any holes I'm just uh, pushing them into place and letting them dry but what happens with the Elmers is they just sag and they don't do as good a job as I would like for them to do but fortunately there's other glues Another glue I really like to use is Eileen's Tacky Glue, and this is a thick crafter's version. Look for this pink label. And this is a very, very thick glue. This is like Elmer's after Elmer's is almost completely dried solid. Uh, it goes on, it goes on very thick, and it's very tacky, hence the name Tacky Glue. And this really allows you to take pieces like this and just stick them into place like this and it holds it just that simple. Put it in place, press it in a little bit, and that'll be there. It'll take quite a bit to, to knock that loose up there. Get another little sprig ready to put there at the top. Now these I'm putting alongside the trunk at the very top. When that white glue dries, you won't be able to see that uh, you won't be able to see the white glue it'll be clear and you can see these pieces up at the top now also what I do I take some of them and I put them horizontally but I don't put them into holes I just stick them onto the trunk and let it dry this is a good way to get a nice bushy effect at the top quickly and easily without damaging the trunk so just continue to add these little scraps and bits that you have and at some point you need to stop, step aside, let it dry. But you can see this is going to give you a pretty nice looking tree. The more of these you build, the faster they become and you get to where you can crank these out pretty good. I actually keep tree making supplies around so when people come over and look at my layout and they talk about the trees, I let them build me a couple. They're, they enjoy doing it and I get a couple of trees made. So just trimmed it up a little bit. Now the important part is let this thing dry. Now this is what it looks like close up. The glue's not quite dry yet, but you can see how it's nice and bushy up there at the top instead of just that little bit of wood being exposed. And this is how it looks on my layout. This is a uh, oh, probably 13 inches high, about a 70-foot tree. Uh, and you can, that's an O-scale structure there to the left of it, and that's an O-scale uh, combine there. And you always find things to trim. Here's one little limb that sticks out, so even after it's on the layout, you can go ahead and trim it. Now, when it comes to the trunks themselves, there's a lot of different things you can do with these trunks. One thing is this is one that was busted. I busted this one using too big a drill. So rather than throwing the trunk away, I could do different things. I could, I could taper it down, or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the top of this. And I'm just going to keep the trunk. I'll make a, a nicer cut than what I did. That just broke through. Okay, there I got just the trunk. I'm going to drill a hole in it. This is the same drill I used for putting the toothpick in. Then your hobby shop probably has a lot of these quick and easy ready-to-go trees that you can just uh, glue on your layout. Well, I'm going to take one of those, but instead of gluing it on my layout, I'm going to glue it on the top of this trunk. It's not a bad-looking little tree, but if you have a lot of trees you need to have in a hurry, this is one way to make tall pine trees is just do it like this. Now that trunk is pretty thick for this. Uh, ideally it would be a a smaller trunk, but that's what I happen to have available at the time of making this demo. Now, when I make my trunk, sometimes I go ahead and I make uh, whole logs just to uh, have for making different things. I'm going to cut this off at the bottom here, square it up, and yeah, it's pretty messy. I'm going to cut it again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut halfway through almost, and then I'm going to turn it over completely and cut almost halfway through, not right on top of it, but off a little bit. Then I'm just going to snap it. And after I've snapped it, what I have is I have a stump 
uh, like would be out in the wood after it's been logged over. There are other things you can do. You can cut a chunk of this off. Take a, a rough edge like um, all the corner of your your razor saw and dig at it. And what I'm going to simulate here is a type trunk that has been out in the wood, a stump that's been out that was either fire damaged or was hit by lightning, a damaged trunk, whatever it was. Most of the tree is gone, just part of the trunk remains. And the center is sort of rotten out or has been burned out. And rather than use an X-Acto knife or a file, I really just like digging into this with the tip of a, a square saw blade like this. It roughens it up, really pulverizes the inside, and it just uh, produces a nice effect by my eye. Then I just take some dark gray paint and dab it in there. Now, if it was burned, I would use a black paint in there to represent uh, charcoal or the burnt remnants. Just something like that. Just a, a little quick thing to do with some of the stumps. What you're going to find when you start making these trees, you end up with little odds and end pieces left over all the time. You don't want to throw them away. So you just come up with ways to use all those different uh, logs. Now, this is one of a tree I made many years ago. I use it just for an illustration here. You can say I was really skimpy on the number of leaves. I figured, well, if I don't drill a lot of holes, I, it'll go a lot more quickly. Well, it just doesn't look nearly as good as the other trees. I also use this as an example because this is one where my, my limbs were covered with foam, just to show you what it looks like with the foam on it. Now I'm going to get a piece of the section I painted with uh, green just to show you the difference. And I don't know why, but I like the kind that's just the raw Caspia painted dark green. I'm always looking for quick and easy ways to do trees. And these are little tiny pine cones. You buy a bag of them, a big bag of them at Michael's. Just lay them out on the table on a piece of newspaper and spray them dark green. And before long, you end up with hundreds of these little tiny pines. Well, they don't look that great up close. This is some installed on my layout. This is right against my backdrop. And there you can see those are little pine cones just painted green. That's all there is to it. But as you pull away and you look at them progressively further and further away, they get to where they make a very good representation of a forest. Now we're going to talk about creating deciduous trees. There's all kinds of deciduous trees. So we're going to talk about the principles of how to do it. And one of the nicest things to come along in the last 10 years are called super trees. And it was about 10 years ago these first became available. When we use super trees, we're going to need to be able to hang them so that they dry. So I'm going to make a little device. If you live in a warm climate, you can go outside and on a clothesline with clothespins, just hang these things up. I don't have that option here in Alaska when it's 20 below zero, so I have to hang them in my house. I hang them on my kitchen cabinets. So I'm making uh, up some epoxy here, and I've got a clothespin, I've got some soft rope I made a loop in, and I've got some dental floss. And from this, I'm going to make a handy little device for hanging these things. I just take my epoxy and I put a liberal amount on one side of the clothespin. And then I take my rope and I press one strand of that loop right into that epoxy. Then I take some of my dental floss and I just wrap around and tie that in place. Made these nice and long for the purpose of illustration. If you cut them just cut them shorter, it's easier to do. I'm having to work around that long rope there, but you can cut it just right. Do that. Get your epoxy again. You don't need a lot of these. I think I made about five or six of them. That's all the kitchen cupboard doors I could use. So I just put some more epoxy on there to really put that rope in there firm. Now that rope's not going anywhere and there's not much weight on these. But as I had the epoxy mix, figured to go ahead and do it. Okay, now my epoxy's all set up. And I just cut off the end of the rope that's 
at the clothespin, cut off the other end of the rope, cut off that uh, stringy bit of uh, dental floss. And there I have a clothespin that you can clamp on the trunk of the tree, and then a loop that you can hang over the doorknob on your kitchen cabinet. Very handy. Foliage. Lots of different foam available. Woodland Scenics makes great. This is from AMSI. It's expensive foam. They got a few colors you just can't find other places. And this is what the super tree looks like. You get a large bag of these. You can get them from Walther's. You can get them from Scenic Express. They look very much like a tree. The only real problem is, is almost all of them are curved. So they got to be straightened out. We'll talk about how to do that. The other thing, a minor problem, is they got those leaves in there. Can you see that, that leaf in there, right there? Uh, you got to pick all those out. So get your tweezers and start pulling. There's generally about 20 of these in each one of these trees. This is by far the most time-consuming part of this. So if you can get your family to take part in doing this while watching TV, you can get a lot of them done. Now this is a mixture of uh, matte medium and water. This is the same solution we had before. The one part matte medium to five parts of water. It's well shaken up and we push the tree down in there. Now I've already had one in there soaking. I've had this one soaking about 20 minutes. These tree trunks, when you get them, they're very dried out and very brittle. But after you soak this in here for 20 minutes, it becomes very flexible, very limber, and very supple. So we're just going to cover this with uh, shredded foam. This is that olive green from AMSI that I'm using here. It's just uh, one of the many colors available. Now I'm not trying to get it on the trunk. I'm trying to avoid getting it down on the trunk of the tree. If you get some on the trunk of the tree after it's dry, you can reach up in there with a paintbrush sometimes and get it loose. But I'm just trying to get it out on the, the area of the limbs themselves. But I'm trying to get it all. Take your time, rotate it around. While you're doing this, this makes you familiar with the shape of the tree and the trunk. And you can see where it needs straightening or not. You get that and just tap it off, but you can see it's curved, so using these hemostats, if I put it on this side, it'll accentuate the curve. If I put it on this side, the weight of the hemostats, watch what happens when I let go. The weight of the hemostats straightens that out. Doesn't make it perfectly straight, but it comes awfully close to making it straight. And you can fiddle with it and get it just right. Put my clothespin on it, and that's ready to hang on my kitchen cupboard. So a nice, convenient place for it to dry. So I just go ahead and make the next one. Works great doing it this way. If you have a large forest to do, this is just about the fastest way you can have good-looking trees. Between each tree, though, it's very important you shake it up. That matte medium settles out really quick. Just in that short period of time, it needs to be shaken again. Once you get it shaken, just dip your next tree in. The Scenic Express says to leave them in there for 20 minutes. I've discovered you don't need to do that. Uh, if, if you want it to be soft and supple, that's great. But you can just uh, put them in there. Sometimes you can just leave them in there for two minutes and it's fine. Little tiny ones like this make great little in-scale trees or distant HO trees. Just spray some hairspray on them, dip them in the foliage. You got a nice little tree just like that. One of the ingredients I like using with these super, super trees is this notch makes these lime green leaves. I can't see them very well. I'll put them down here on this black paper. See, it's almost like individual leaves. Very realistic. They make a dark color, but uh, you just spray you know, your thing with uh, hairspray or dip it in the matte medium and sprinkle that on, and you very quickly end up with some nice-looking trees. You can cover a lot of ground with this stuff. This is just absolutely the fastest way to make good-looking trees that I know of. 
Notch also makes this uh, dark green, elm leaves. Uh, here I've taken a tree that I've uh, spray painted black. You can put these on there. You can, uh, you know, you can paint these uh, super trees any color you want. Whether you want brown, natural color, black, whatever. Soak them and put this in. Now, here I've got a spray bottle. I've put one part matte medium to ten parts of water. Okay, it's a very thin mixture. What you can do, you can shake this up. After that tree is dried, you can spray some more of this matte medium on here. Just like this. You can see how flexible that tree is, how supple. And then you can just go ahead and add more foliage on there if you want. Or just spray it just to lock on the foliage that's on there without adding more. Little tree like that, same thing. Just stick it on there with that. Now I use an awful lot of Aquanet. This is unscented. It's super hold. I find these super trees, even without soaking them in matte medium, seem to hold up well. So this is another way of doing it. It's even faster. Just take... Uh, this tree, I've painted it, uh, spray painted it with dark gray. Just cover it with the foliage. And just that quickly, just that quickly, you got a nice looking tree. That's all there is to it. Set it aside to dry. And you can build a forest in a hurry with these trees. Just great. So I'll leave that there. Now here what I'm doing is I'm showing you how to make birch trees and aspen trees. You take the raw uh, super trees and break off oh, just about half of the stems that come off of the trunk. Both birch and aspen, one of the main features, they got a long tall trunk with no foliage down in, or branches on the lower half. So you just do this like this. You can leave it this color Still got to pull out those little tiny leaves in there. There's just always one or two more in there. Now Woodland Scenics makes trees using this. But the trees I've had had those little things in there. They don't look bad, but uh, if you're really fussy, go ahead and pull them out. Okay. That's just about ready to go. Okay. And just keep pulling those little things out. Okay. Uh, always one more. Always one more. Okay, get those out of our working area there. Now up at the top of this one, it's broken. So I'm trimming it off just a little bit. shouldn't use as big a tool. I end up breaking some of it. But uh, small scissors reach in there. So if you got one of these limbs that's broken, or if you just want to make one that's taller, depending upon the type tree you're modeling, you can uh, go ahead and uh, build it up. But first I'm going to show you how to straighten it. You just break it. Break it at the, the area where it's got its greatest curvature. Put a little of uh, ACC, the slow setting thick type, Hold it together for a little bit, and that'll that's long enough for it to, to work. Give it some zip kicker to set that glue up faster. There you go. Whereas you had a curved trunk before, now you got a straight one. Okay, nice and straight. Very easy, easy way to do this. Now, if you want to build up that tree at the top, take some uh, little sprigs of uh, material and you can uh, put uh, cyanacrylate on it. Now if you try putting it on the, the material itself, like I'm going to show you here, this doesn't work very well. It's just too small. The way to do it is to put it on the trunk of the tree. Just put some on the trunk of the tree like that. Take the stuff you're adding and just stick it right there on top. Now you can build these trees up, make them as bushy as you want, you can make them as tall as you want just by doing this. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more there. So I'll go in close and show you. 
put a little drop of the cyanacrylate on there. And this is the thick kind. You get the thin kind, it'll just run down the tree real fast. So just find a little bushy thing you want to apply. Stick it in there. That's where I rest it in the, the, where that little branch meets the tree. Just like that. Leave it there for a little bit. Give it a shot of the zip kicker. That's all there is to it. And that's ready to go. Okay, now here I want to make a, a birch. Now here I'm taking the time with some white paint and I'm reaching up in there as far as I can to paint the uh, the trunk. Now birch trees, the branches themselves are pretty dark, but the trunk is very white. So I'm just using a small brush here. You don't have to reach too far up there and be too terribly concerned up inside because there's going to be foliage on all these uh, limbs going to hide that trunk pretty much. It's not going to be solid, so you want to spend a little bit of time on it. But the, you know, just the natural uh, color of these super trees uh, makes it fine to use it even without painting it. But for the birch, I want to go ahead and paint it. I paint it white. Use a small brush, of course. Small amounts of paint. Now you don't worry about need to getting the paint all the way to the bottom because when we stick this into our scenery, whether it's plaster or whether it's uh, foam, uh, we're just going to drill a little hole and stick it right in. So the, down where my fingers is, that's going to be down inside your scenery itself. So you don't have to worry about that. Now having done the white, I go directly into the black. And you start reaching up in here and just put little tiny bits of black. Um, a lot of variety in the shapes of these, so don't be concerned about the shape of these black marks on the birch trees. These black parts are called eyes. They're a distinctive feature of birch. I think they call them eyes because they're shaped sort of like eyes. And, you know, different type of birch have different uh, bark and colors and everything. Now, uh, Cottonwood is very similar to this, except it's not uh, not quite as white. It's more of a brown. Anyway, just put these little black uh, marks on there. And stop when you think it looks just about right. How's that? Okay, now I'm using those uh, Notch brand lime colored leaves. This is going to be a birch that's late in the fall. It's not a summertime birch. Summertime birch is dark. This is pretty light colored. So I'm just uh, putting the little leaves on there. This also is a very quick way to make a very nice looking tree. Now I'm being careful trying not to get any on the trunk of the tree itself, but just out on the edges of the uh, where the limbs are and everything. You can always knock the, the little leaves off the trunk, but it's better if you just are careful and try to avoid doing it. So just uh, work in small areas of the tree. Start at the side. You can do it from the top. Some people say only put the leaves from the top. I find I like to have the leaves on the top, and I like to have them on the bottom and everything. It's what looks good to you. This is what works for me. These are the secrets of making trees that I've used for years. And I just really enjoy making trees. I find trees to be one of the most enjoyable parts of the hobby. Very relaxing for me. Now, to make an aspen tree, we do exactly the same thing. We paint the trunk the same way. Clear off all the lower branches. And we're just spraying it here with hairspray. But this time, instead of using the green, I'm using a, a, a yellow. It's not really bright yellow. Uh, it's kind of yellow that looks like what I think aspens look like. And it also looked like birch does here in Alaska uh, right at the start of winter, right when the last leaves are on there, when all the color's there. Now, if you model Colorado, 
uh, or a certain area or a certain kind of tree, well, find a book that has photographs of it and buy the kind of uh, shredded foam that is just the right color for the type of trees that you want to have. Okay, very good. Two quick and easy trees. One birch, one aspen. Very easily done. Most of you that are familiar with my videos know that I started doing these by doing backdrop painting videos. Now, I know you didn't really buy a video on how to paint backdrops, but there's one technique I'd like to share with you for, for doing aspens and birch. And I do this because so many of you model Colorado narrow gauge, and aspens and birch are just part of that Colorado scenery. So what I'm doing is I've, I've got this scene here, and I'm going to add a stand of aspen or birch right up here at the very front. So I start off with gesso. You can use white uh, acrylic paint, but I'm using gesso, which is like uh, acrylic white paint. It's a little cheaper. It, it goes on thick. It sticks very well. It's just a staple in my, uh, my painting supply, so it's very convenient for me to use this. You want to paint this area, the whole area. When you think of how big you want your trees to be and where you want to cover it, paint the whole thing with this uh, white gesso to start with. I'm using vertical strokes. Sorry my hand is in the way, but this is a little short paint brush. This is 59 cent paint brush from uh, Lowe's. So there you've got it on there, and we just want to set and let that dry completely. Okay, so now we're going to use some of my favorite uh, painting tool screwdrivers. Most of you don't think of using screwdrivers for doing painting. Well, that's why I'm showing you this demonstration, just to show you a different way of doing these things. Here we, uh, the paint is dry, that white paint is dry, and we're using this forest green. And what we're doing with this forest green, this is Apple Barrel brand forest green, we're just painting over the white completely. We're covering it completely. Notice I'm dabbing it on. I'm not painting up and down. I'm not painting back and forth. I'm dabbing it on just to, so that the, can you see the little light and dark variations in the paint? That's sort of, right there is sort of reminiscent of trees. Now we take the screwdrivers. Take the edge of a uh, screwdriver and just cut a bunch of marks into it. What you're doing is scraping the dark green paint off so that the white shows through. Just do a whole bunch of them. Try to do them straight up and down, but don't use a ruler. Just do them freehand, but try to make them straight up and down. After you do that, you take a screwdriver and you turn it sideways and you use the broad part of the screwdriver to scrape even bolder parts off. This represents tree trunks that's closer to you than the first ones were. Okay, pretty easy. Now I only did half the area because I wanted to do it while that paint was wet. I didn't want it to dry. So after we've done the first half there, we do exactly the same thing. On the left half, we dab on the paint. just like this, cover all of it, and as soon as we get done covering all the paint, before the paint has uh, any chance to dry, we get our screwdrivers again. Again, we start with a small one, lots of vertical lines that go, try to have them start right at the very top and come all the way down. Just go all the way across. Don't, don't make them uniform distance apart. We don't want telephone poles there. We don't want picket fences. We don't want it to look like a cluster of trunks. Now we use the wide part of the screwdriver again. And again, just press hard. Scrape off all that green paint. Just like that. Okay, so there's what our trunks are going to look like. Now we let this dry completely. We don't do anything to it until it's dried completely. Now again, we're going to use that forest green. And now I've got sort of a rounded brush. 
and what we want to do is all over the tops of these we want it to be rounded we don't want any square lines we want it to be rounded so I'm taking that paint and just covering right over the top of these notice I'm going right along the tree line at the top I'm making sure that it's not a straight line. It goes up and down, variations in it. Then I come back over and add some more of that dark paint right over the trunks. And I bring this about halfway down where I think on the trees it's going to be. Then I add just a little bit of this dark green paint, a uh, little bit over the area of the trunks, and then right across the bottom and what I'm doing now is I'm showing where the bottom of this row of trees is. This defines the actual height of your trees, this step right here. Cover that up good with this dark green. And once you get that to where that looks right in your eyes, well then go ahead and just blend this dark green back down into your paint a bit. We don't want any sharp edges here. We're going to work with this a little bit. But we just want it so it's, it's a pretty soft edge there. Okay. Now we're going to get some Apple Barrel brand bright yellow paint. And the bright yellow, uh, we're going to start off by mixing it with that, uh, that green. When we mix the bright yellow with the green, we end up with a, a pretty bright green. That's what it looks like. We're just going to mix those two together there. See, I'm just stabbing it in there. Okay, just getting some on there, and then I'm going to come over, and I'm just dabbing this on the paint. So I'm just dabbing it on there. I'm not, I'm not brushing up and down. I'm not brushing in circles. I'm not brushing back and forth. I'm just dabbing this on. What I'm doing is I'm just mixing these colors right on my backdrop itself. Okay, just like that. Just blending those colors in there. Now when you get down towards the bottom, you can paint back and forth. You can paint back and forth once you get your colors on. Uh, you just want to get these blended together well. We're going to be working on this area a little bit more. Okay, just like that. Now we're going to pick up that same uh, mix of the, the bright yellow and everything. We're going to come up, we're going to start working on the tops of these trees. Now you work your way across just doing the top left corner of the, each clump of trees. We're assuming the light is coming from the left, the sun is on the left, so it hits these trees and it just provides highlights on the top and on the left hand side of the trees. And we add small amounts of paint. We're dabbing this on there. We're not brushing it on. We're dabbing it on. So there was our first coat. Now we're coming back with a little more yellow. We're working pretty much with straight yellow at this point. And by just putting it on the tops and on the left hand side, can you see how it makes little stands of trees? We're not painting individual trees, but we're trying to make the effect of individual trees. Now I've got some of that yellow paint, so I'm putting some across the bottom. Just add a little more color at the bottom, and there I'm going back and forth like that, and that's just really defining, you know, those weeds and grasses that are right in front of that stand of trees. The other colors down below, we just blend out a little bit more. We just want some nice bright color right there at the edge between those trunks and the, the grass in front of it to help define that edge there. We want that to be a clearly defined edge. Okay, just smoothing it out there. Very straightforward in doing this. Very easy. You know, backdrop painting can be addictive. Uh, if, if you're at all interested in things like this, I have other backdrop videos. Uh, when I go to conventions, I always give backdrop painting classes. I've done that for years. like doing clinics. Okay, now that's completely dry. Now we're going to use a different kind of yellow. This is Liquitex Yellow Oxide. And see it's more of a, a, an orangish golden color rather than straight yellow. So I'm really stabbing my brush into that. See how that brush is flayed out? 
I'm just going to try and use that just to put a little bit of color on there. And I'm finding this particular brush is just not right for this. And plus, you can't see what I'm doing. So I'll just continue on over rather than stopping at this point. I'll continue on over, then I'll switch to another kind of brush. I'm just wanting to get some uh, dabs of this gold and yellow on there. The other was pretty much the color of birch. Now we're working on the aspen. So I've covered up the green pretty much that was on there. Okay, so we got that yellow. Now let me go to a smaller brush here. Yeah, I've got one here. Now we're going to add some bright yellow. We're going back to that uh, Apple Barrel brand bright yellow that we used before. And we got it right there and with a smaller brush so you can see what's going on. I'm really stabbing it in there again. And again, I paint by dabbing it on. I dab it on. Just touch it onto there. And I'm doing it on the tops. See, like across the top. Then down the left side of each little clump of trees there. Tops. Left side. Tops. Left side. If you model Colorado, it's going to be so much easier if you paint these things on your backdrop. You know, even if you don't have the mountains there and you don't have those background hills, but you just make a stand of trees, uh, it works very well just against the blue sky to make them this way. But I like having all the other stuff there in the background as well. Just walk, work slowly at this. Small amounts of paint. Again, you can see I'm just really dabbing it on there. I'm not uh, using a brush stroke. Just dabbing on little bits of color. I rotate the brush as I use it. So there's plenty of fresh paint. And when I run out of paint, I just pick up a little tiny bit more. Don't do an awful lot. If you try to do an awful lot, you'll end up, uh, or you'll end up being unhappy with it. That's the only way I can uh, explain it. Okay, doing pretty good there, getting uh, what we want to accomplish. Trees are looking pretty good. Okay, and whatever paints I have left on my paintbrush, whatever paints I have left on my palette, I go ahead and work with them. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to pick up some of that lime, uh, let's see, leaf green. It's Apple Barrel brand leaf green I'm going to use here in just a second. I'm just going across there. I put a little bit of this yellow up in the trunk areas because there's always a few trees back there that are catching the light. Maybe some shorter trees that are showing through. And it lightens it up. It's important to make these pretty light in color. Uh, what I do when I paint my backdrops, I paint it about this far forward. Then I put my three-dimensional scenery in. Then after my three-dimensional scenery is, and I've got my actual trees, my real trees, then I see if I need to paint any specific trees onto the backdrop so that I'm able to blend those together. Okay. Very good. That all looks very nice. Okay. Now I'm going to take some of that uh, leaf green, that bright green that I talked about. And I'm just going to take some of it and I'm just going to finish up this area right in front of the trees and make the hill so it's distinct from that hill on the right. See that hill on the right? See those dark colors coming down there, in there. It gives us a feeling that it's curved. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate this hill from that one by using this brighter green. And it's very easy. Just fill it in and just bring it right on down like that. That's all there is to it. Makes it very clear that this is a hill that is different than the one on the right and you can tell that it's in front of the one on the right. Just little tricks of the trade. That's When I give a clinic that's what I really try to emphasize is how to achieve distance uh, in your paintings. Very easy to do. Plus it's an awful lot of fun. Okay, just finishing touching up that. And then now we're going to go into uh, making different kinds of deciduous trees. 
We all have our favorite way of doing things. My favorite way of making deciduous trees is by using sagebrush. When I travel, I always take my camera, and I really love digital photography because I can take hundreds and hundreds of photos. I take pictures of trees. Now, on the trip up to the loggers convention in Sonora last year, I took pictures of oak trees in particular. These are all up near the Sierra Railroad, up near uh, Westside Lumber Company. And I did this, I tried to find trees that stood against the sky so that I could see what the tree structure was like. These are all oaks. They're all rounded. They all have uh, areas through them. Most of the limbs come really close to the ground. See how that comes almost all the way down? Another distinctive feature about these trees is uh, they're round, like I say, they're rounded, and there's areas where you can see through. Occasionally you'll find one that's flat across the bottom. This was very distinctive, uh, an oak tree that was essentially flat. Lots of variety. I also uh, go to California during the winter and during the winter I was in the San Joaquin Valley and I sought out these particular varieties. These are oak trees also but with all the f leaves gone you can first off see what the color is like. See how it's almost brown? And you can also see that uh, what the trunk is like and, and what the limb structure is like very very clearly when you do this. So travel with your camera. Okay. Now here's a chunk of sagebrush. You know, a nice piece of sagebrush like this, boy, that would make a great dead tree, just like it is. But what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to make a deciduous tree. Now this one, the limbs are pretty much vertical on it. Uh, so they, they point pretty much straight up, whereas a lot of oaks point out to the sides. So we're just going to call this a deciduous tree. Nice color. Now I've taken some of my super tree material and I sprayed it a light gray to match the color pretty close of the sagebrush. Once I've done that, I start breaking off all the limbs. Now when I say I break them all off, I don't break them all off. I break them all off up till the very top and I generally save the top part of each of these structures to have as a small HO tree or an N scale tree or a tree way off in the background. But occasionally I'll even cut the top off it like that if I, if I need it for what I'm working on. So you just do this. And what you do is you take these individual uh, little stems that you're breaking off and you glue those onto the tips of the sagebrush. Use a Aileen's uh, tacky glue to do this. And in this next picture you're going to see how I've done that. Here I've got the sagebrush. I've glued these on. I've glued these on and I'm just waiting for the glue to dry. Now what I do is I take the paint. I take my uh, hairspray. This is Aquanet Superhold Unscented Hairspray and I give it a really good coating of the hairspray like this. Can you see that balls of white? That's hairspray. So that's what I do and I just drop the foam onto it. I take this shredded foam and just drop it onto here. This is how a lot of people do this. This works very well. But I've got another way that I really prefer to use that I want to show you next. Here, uh, this does a, a pretty good job as you can see. That looks fine. But I've got a way that does it the, that I think looks even better and that's what I'm going to show you next. So my way of doing this here, what I do is I take my spray net and again I'm using one of those super trees that's been sprayed uh, a light gray color and has been allowed to dry. I spray it really well instead of breaking the stems off then I take this and I just drop this and I put it down by my shredded foam and I'm just going to cover it liberally with shredded foam. I'm just really going to pile it on there. I even roll it around in the stuff a little bit. I just want to get as much of this on there as I can. Once I get it completely covered, I set it aside 
and I let it dry. Okay, makes a nice looking tree, but we're going to we're going to tear this thing apart in order to make a better tree. After it's completely dry, what I do is I go through and I remove all these different stems. Okay, I work up to the top of the tree. I save the top part of the tree because it makes a nice HO scale tree the way it is. But I remove all these stems like this. I just set them down. Eh, they make even good little trees and bushes in and of themselves. So I get to a certain point there and I, I keep thinking about it and decide that's about the right amount right there. So that leaves me a pretty good looking HO scale tree or uh, a large N scale tree or a background tree in HO. Pretty nice little tree. So I set that aside and I'm going to save that. Okay, now to glue this on, I use Aileen's thick uh, designer tacky glue. This is a crafter's glue. It's thick. Look for that pink label. That's the secret. Now, I've got the, the, the glue down here on a little sticky pad, and you can stick it right into the, the bush that you're putting on, right into the glue, and stick it on there. And that's fine. Uh, that's sort of the natural way to think about doing it, but it makes it so it doesn't stick on there very well. And for me, I'm just shaky enough. I'm not really bad shaky, but I'm just shaky enough that this causes it not to adhere quite properly. So when I go to add other pieces on there, I may get one or two on, but I may end up knocking them off. Let me show you close up how this looks uh, that I'm working on here. So you see, I'm trying to get it just right. And now that white glue shows up now, but when it's dry, that'll be invisible. You won't see that at all. Okay, so there's a close-up. Zoom right in on that. Okay, and there's that piece I put on. And just in the process of, of doing stuff, this is going to let go. See how that lets go? It's just, even though the tacky glue works good, it just won't hold it. It'll hold the bare branch fine. But once you put the foam on, it's just heavy enough. It doesn't want to go do a good job of holding it. So I've got a, w a way of working around that that I do. Now first off, I've also discovered it's better to take a toothpick and pick up some of the glue and put it on the branches rather than sticking the branches into the glue. Okay, so there I go. I've got the toothpick. Hard for me to do this and keep it in frame. Just bear with me here. I'll bring it down so you can see it a little better. I can either focus on keeping this, look at the monitor, and keep this right in the frame, or else I can focus on what I'm trying to do. And this is just delicate enough. I need to really focus on the tree itself. Okay, so you can see I'm just putting a liberal batch of glue on that limb. Not just a spot, but all down the limb. Then you just press this into it, and see how I just press my finger in there? That causes it to go in there and it causes it to stick well. The other thing I like to do is I like to lay the, the sagebrush down on a surface and work this way. So what I'm doing is I'm working at the top, working my way down, and I'm also working my way from left to right across on this tree. That way I can continue to add a bunch of bushes of these little clumps like this without having to move it around. So I don't have to worry about shaking it and causing the parts to fall off. So very easy, just this gives you two hands. Instead of holding it with one and working, it gives you two hands. So you can hold the little twig in place like that. And use your other finger to push it into place. This really speeds up the operation and it makes it a, a, a lot less messy as well. Very effective. Important, let these things dry. Work on a few uh, areas, let it dry. Work on it, take another tree, work on several at a time. By far the best way to do it. Always look for areas or see there's a lot of areas here where I can continue to add things. 
And using this method, no matter how much you add, you're not going to end up with too much. So that's one of my trees. That's how it's done with this method, and I think that makes a very nice tree. That's a tree that'll look just as well on a layout, look just as well on a diorama. Great tree. Let me stick it up in front of uh, my layout. Here's another one I did. Nice looking tree, same method, same type of material. Here it is in front of my backdrop. I've got a little foam there, uh, stuck there in front for me to stick it in so I can turn it around just so you can see how it is. So when you put these in place, take the time to swing them around. See how they actually look. Now there's another kind of tree. This is over at the coast of California. I saw this one. This is a tall, thin, real scraggly looking tree and it wasn't the only one. There was a bunch of them. So it's not dead or anything. It's, it's just a style of tree that's over along the coast. So that's what I'm going to model now. Now this material right here, this is a, a scrub brush. You get these in the summertime. These are for cleaning barbecue grills. It, it's really strong, hard to pull out even using needle nose pliers. But I just take the needle nose pliers and I just pull out these little chunks. So I want a little chunk like that. See how that looks? It's a fibrous material. It's the type of thing I would call horsehair don't know what it is really but it's what I'd call horsehair. You get a bunch of those out, put glue on the, the very tips of uh, some of your sagebrush or uh, whatever uh, type material you're using. This works well with old roots as well as it does with uh, sagebrush. And you just sort of impale these pieces on there. Oh, you gotta make sure you get them on there right. And just sort of impale it onto those pieces of wood. Now here, that was a pretty scrawny looking tree. Remember, it wasn't real bushy. It wasn't real full. So the, the limbs were very open. And it just had these little clusters of uh, foliage in certain areas. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a tree that looks just like that kind of tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was. Well, it was just uh, one of the many trees I noticed and I took pictures of. Okay, a little glob of glue like that, but, you know, that's really not going to make any difference because it's going to dry and visible. And by the time you put your foliage on there, it covers up that blob of glue pretty well, just like it is. Of course, I don't want to encourage you to be sloppy with your glue. You know, uh, you want to be very careful with these. Um, but if you do have a, glo a glob like that, you don't have to get too terribly concerned about it. But try to be neat with these. Okay, you just continue working from the top down to the bottom on these. And that's how it's beginning to shape up. So we just work on some of these smaller limbs, lower limbs. The glue I'm putting on here, this is Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's a nice glue. It grabs well. Uh, doesn't cost much. Elmer's is a little too thin. Sometimes with Elmer's like this, you put it on here, it'll actually run down the stem and uh, loses its effectiveness and just doesn't look quite as well as if you use the Aileen's. A variety of glues for different purposes, but this works very well for this purpose for sure. And we just continue to add these little uh, sprigs of this material. there you can sort of see the, the glue there so I'm going to put a piece on this side. You can put two pieces on, that's fine. It's very lightweight material so just the tiniest bit of glue will hold it on. But again it's very important to let the glue dry. And then what we're going to do of course after all this is done, after it's all dry, we're going to we're going to spray it with hairspray and we're going to put some of that foam on it just to give it the finishing touch. But we want to make sure it all looks good before we start adding the foam. Just continuing to add these pieces here. Now, some of those stringy areas we'll need to trim with some small scissors before we're done. We're just trying to get it to look sort of like that tree did. Okay. Progressing along pretty well. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. 
not heavily not a lot of branches not a lot of leaves just little clumps here and there pretty scraggly looking tree is the only thing I know to refer to it as okay now there's that tree again see that's just got little tufts here and there uh, vertical branches mainly you can see the the trunk and the limbs a little bit of foliage so that's what we're after now this is all dry so we're going to give it a shot with the uh, uh, hairspray works best with the hairspray if you work on a cluster at a time rather than spraying the whole tree uh, just work on a cluster at a time and just add the spray now here I uh, add the foam and here I'm just adding a little bit of foam I'm not trying to put a lot of foam on here just little bits of foam at a time is what we're trying to accomplish just like that because that was a pretty scraggly looking tree in fact if anything this tree has too much uh, foliage on it already too many bushes but we're certainly just trying to convey the impression of that particular tree okay it's looking pretty good the main thing we're trying to cover here of course is just different materials different techniques of making trees make you aware of what trees look like how to use different materials we're not really trying to show you how to make a particular tree now another reason for spraying a, f a clump of foliage a little bit at a time and adding it is one the the hairspray doesn't dry out but the overspray from the hairspray hits the rest of the tree and sort of causes the other foliage to stick there after I'm done with the tree like this I let all the uh, hairspray dry completely then I generally give it another coat uh, to cover it up completely after it's dry. Um, this uh, knocks any shine that might be off on the tree, knock off the shine. Uh, just hairspray is very handy. And it works very well for this type of glue. Just about to finish that up. Okay. Now occasionally we're going to have trees to where we don't have the right kind of, of uh, limb and uh, trunk structure so we have to figure out a different way of doing that so that's what we're going to talk about next so we're just about all finished up with this tree just a little bit more foliage now you can always go back over these and add a little lighter color green and br uh, put highlights on it that way you can even give it an overshot a light overshot of yellow just to bring out the highlights okay well I think that one's pretty well done that looks pretty good to me so we'll just let that one finish up there very nice now we're going to talk about making a particular kind of tree and we're going to talk about oaks lots of different kinds of oaks in a world but uh, most of them share some common uh, common things. One of them, they're round at the top. They're a rounded type of uh, tree. Got a heavy trunk, uh, large uh, distinctive branches, and negative areas. See that empty space? And letting the light show through. That's very important when we make our model trees or when we're painting trees to let that happen. But again, a very dark, heavy base. Uh, casts a distinct shadow, uh, but that the base of the tree and the way you color it uh, uh, most people want to paint them black uh, with a maybe a light gray bark I like it with some brown now what I have here is I have a, a sheet of uh, blue foam that I've put some very porous green material on and I've got some sisal rope this is quarter inch sisal rope it's got three major strands got some spackling compound here we're going to use this to uh, build up our trunks got uh, some zip kicker and some slow setting thick glue uh, the zip kicker which I have in my hand there really speeds that up an awful lot and then these you buy down at Sears these are a type of cutter that cuts through rope cleanly you don't have to buy one of these uh, I use it enough that I find it worthwhile to have uh, you can just cut through with a, a, an exacto knife or something like that okay so here we have some quarter inch sisal rope 
I'm going to cut off about 8 or 10 inches. Sisal rope, uh, the quarter inch size, has three major cords running through it. Uh, the 3 8 inch rope, which you'd use for quarter inch scale trees, has four major cords. So we're just going to uh, stick a toothpick down in the end of it. We're going to uh, apply some of our uh, thick, slow setting glue. I'm make sure it gets stuck in there. We want to fill this in pretty good down here at the bottom. I'm going to put about an inch worth, going to cover about an inch worth of this trunk with this glue. And you can either set and hold it in position, but it takes so long for this glue to set up. Don't really want to do that. What we really want to do is we want to use some zip kicker. So we get the zip kicker out, give it a spray, hold it into position, and then after just a very few seconds, this sets up uh, very hard so that you can speed right along to the next part. Again, this is the type of thing. It works best to work on three or four of these uh, trees at one time. So while one section is completely setting up, you can go ahead to the next. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how I'm untwisting that rope. I'm going to get those three major cords out. I'm going to take one of them and unroll it, unravel it, all the way down to the section where it's already glued. Okay, and you can tell. See how that sort of stands out there? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to make that the first branch, the first major branch off of our trunk. So we simply hold it in position, apply some of our uh, ACC, give it a shot of zip kicker, hold it there long enough for that to set up enough to, to hold it in place and then we're going to proceed to the next part. You'll very quickly learn just how long you have to hold these pieces in order for these different things to work. Now what we do, you recognize that when you play with this and look at it, you'll see that the cord itself is consists of two cords. So we're going to unravel both of those cords back down to where our glue is like this. We're just going to spread that out like that. And just like we put the glue on there already, that part's set up, we're going to put glue on one of these. This is going to form a smaller branch, branching off of that first major branch. So again, we apply, apply our cyanacrylate, give it a shot with a zip kicker, And before long, you can let go. Now we twist it. We want to keep twisting these to keep these things tight together. Interesting when you look at old uh, wood, you recognize that often trees don't grow straight, and especially oaks. Instead of growing straight, they sort of twist as they grow. So even the, the branches twist. And we don't try to really straighten out any of this material. We're going to let these natural curves and kinks form that natural curve and kink that we find in oak trees. So we just continue working with this, taking each strand and twisting off little bits, uh, making it nice and tight, adding the glue and the zip kicker. Just keep breaking this down to progressively smaller and smaller branches. We're going to do that after we do that with this uh, first uh, major chord. Uh, we're going to do that with the others. So we see when we look at the when we look at the trunk there, we see there's a lot of gaps in there. We're going to fill that in a little bit later. Right now, what we want to continue to work on is uh, keeping all these little branches going in here. Just continuing to tease out more of that material. When you tease it out, twist it very tightly. If you don't do that, then you're gonna, it's not going to look like a real branch. So add a little bit of the glue, add a little bit of the zip kicker. Just continue on working like that. You can actually make pretty good progress, especially once you get a feel for this. You can, you can uh, make these uh, reasonably quick. You're never going to make a whole forest of these. Uh, but you can make enough of these to certainly uh, have some impressive trees on your layout. There's a guy out in California 
uh, in Merced. Uh, Charlie Piggott, who makes these and sells these commercially. Um, if you want to buy some of these already made, you can contact me. I'll give you uh, his phone number. So there we go, and at some point we stop and we just trim them off like that. Trim off all the excess there. And we can do different things with those little ends. We can glue some of the sage, some of the super tree things on them, or we can just uh, spread them out a little bit. Uh, lots of different ways of doing this type of thing. Okay, now we got that trunk, and we got those gaps in there, so we're going to work on filling that in. Now we can't put this uh, fill material all the way out to the tips, but we're just going to work on the main part. But let's go ahead and flesh this trunk out a little bit more. Here's one I've got done that uh, already has a lot of that done, so you can see how this progresses. And if you want a taller tree, you can always just take another uh, section of this material, apply a little bit of glue on the material itself, apply a little bit of glue right on the trunk of the tree and glue extra pieces on here. So you can have as tall a tree as you want. You can just keep adding these uh, these different uh, major branch structures on here and just make this as tall and as bushy as you care to make. It holds really well, this, this glue. Just give it time to dry before you move on to the next stage. That's all there is to it. That's the only thing you really have to be careful about. And again, with these, after you've added them on, you just add some more glue, some of the zip kicker, and you proceed to just flesh this out just like the rest of your branches. Now we're going to work a bit on filling in the trunk. This is just spackling compound used for filling little nails holes in your, your walls got a, a small stiff brush. Don't use a, a, a flexible brush. Use a stiff brush. I added a little water through this particular batch because it was pretty dry. Some of them are pretty wet. Some of them are pretty dry. Each one is different. So what I'm doing is I'm just going along and I'm just take, picking up a small amount of this uh, uh, spackling ma material and I'm applying it to the trunk. Now you can't get really high up on the branches, but that's okay because most of the time the branches can't be seen. Most of the branches already have some of that cyanacrylate on it to fill it in anyway. And once it's uh, colored, uh, it's hard to tell. So you want to just make sure you get the whole branch covered. And like I mentioned earlier, fortunately, oaks twist. So if you have a little bit of the twisting effect of the rope showing through, that's okay. You don't want it to be too obvious that you used a piece of rope, however, of course. Just continue applying the material. I like to, to work and, and always stroke down. Once I get the material on, I like to go back over and just make my strokes vertical. But the main thing is you want to get as much of this as you possibly can. You know, this tree is going to be on your layout forever. So you might as well take just a couple extra minutes with it, spend some time getting it to look the best you can. Paint from underneath if need be, different ways of doing this. Okay, so this is what it looks like after we've got the material on there. That's pretty smooth looking at this point. Even though we use a stiff brush, it's still pretty smooth. So I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm just going to reach up in there and just start uh, roughing up the, the texture of the bark. Now I do this a little bit while this is still fairly wet, but as this dries, uh, you can get uh, more and more precise about this. But we're just getting the general effects here just to make our final trim better. Okay, you're not trying for anything perfect here. Little threads, you just have to sort of ignore those. Those occur. You can trim this, get rid of a lot of those threads. Just continue with the toothpick like that. Then after it's set up a little bit more, what you can do is you can come back with an X-Acto knife. Now this is set up a bit. So you can come back with an X-Acto knife now 
and what you can do you look around look and see how it looks and you can come back and with that exacto knife you can actually carve in there i'm using the back side of that exacto knife so that it sort of chips it a bit as you do this so you just want to work over your trunk like this and uh, any little gaps or anything you know bark is not smooth in real life so there's always uh, trees always get a certain amount of abuse So you just do this. That leaves it ready to paint. Now when it comes to painting, we have to really look at the texture of trees. Uh, the bark here on the left is pretty smooth. It's gray. Uh, on this next uh, segment here, we can see that uh, it's dark on the shadowy side, but uh, the sunlit side is uh, very gray, a little speckled. Now this is a birch tree, light, and dark down at the bottom, and it's got those black eyes on it. And this is the type of thing that uh, most people think of oak as looking like. Deep grains, black down in there, uh, light colors on top. So what I've done is I've taken the tree, it's now completely dry, I've taken it out, and I've simply sprayed it with a dark gray paint. And you can leave it just like this and it'll be fine. It really will. Uh, or you can put some highlights on it. You can either put some uh, light gray highlights on it or you can uh, do other things. Now, I like to have a little bit of warmth added uh, using brown paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of Apple Barrel Brands Pewter Gray and then you can see about the shade of gray that is. That's pretty dark. And some of my Folk Art Teddy Bear Tan, one of my favorite colors and I like the warmth that this gives. So I'm just going to take these two colors and I'm going to lightly apply them over to my, my trunk and up a little bit into my my branch areas. So I'm going to reach up into my branches and do this a little bit. But again, I'm not going to be trying to cover this. I'm not going to make it a completely brown tree. I'm just adding a little bit of this color just to provide a little bit of warmth for it. And that's all there is to it. Now again, the particular colors you use for highlighting, you can use light gray. You know, it depends upon the type of oak you're modeling. If you can find some of that oak and look at it or find good photographs of it, uh, then it really helps out an awful lot. I just go sort of generic and after these colors dry, they tone down a little bit. And this is uh, the type color that looks pretty good to my eye. Once you've got your tree to the color that you like, the trunk, we're going to address foliage. Now you can glue some the tips on like we did with the sagebrush. You can do that. Or you can use some of the woodland scenic material. This is a sort of a matte type of material that they've uh, got some of their uh, stuff to adhere to. Very handy. Uh, very good for, for making uh, these oak trees. Since oak trees are sort of rounded on the top, we're going to use this to achieve that effect. Now you can take this and you can just uh, cut off about a one inch square and then start pulling it apart. And the real secret of using this stuff is to keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. If you'd like a little variety, you can lay that whole sheet of this stuff down and spray a little yellow on it or different color highlights in order to uh, add a nice effect to this. Anyway, we keep pulling this apart. We're just going to pull at this until you just think it's, you just can't pull it anymore. You've got to work carefully at this. But the thinner you get this, the better your tree is going to look. So just keep pulling at it. You don't want to rip it apart. If you rip it apart, you just got two small pieces. See, there's just not much of anything there at this point. Okay, so that's what we're wanting to do. So we've got our tree, it's on a toothpick and it's stuck down in that foam. So I just take my material and droop it on. Now you can put little bits of glue on there. Elmer's glue to hold it in, in place. But here I didn't want to make a mess with the Elmer's and wait for it to dry. So I just wanted to be free to go ahead and proceed. So I've got another little piece. Starting at the lower part of one of these major branches, I just stick it on and sort of impale it on those different branches we have there. Taking another piece, 
just working carefully you don't want to cover uh, your tree 100 percent you want to leave some gaps in there but you'll see areas in which the gaps are there so when gaps are there don't work really hard to uh, fill in those gaps just let them go continue adding this material just be careful if you're using glue to hold it in place be sure to stop work on another tree while the glue dries that way you can proceed to the next one without worry next part of the tree without worrying about knocking it loose so we're just adding it on now see it's very important as you're working with this tree you can see that we can see through it that's a very important element of realistic trees is to be able to see through them okay, so uh, you get it on look it out see how it looks now we still need to put some in that area there so we just stretch out add a little bit more this st stuff uh, is elastic so once you get it on there it sort of holds itself in place not always but a uh, pretty good job of it very easy there's different shades woodland scenics makes different shades now i've tried making this material out of batting material with my own foam and I can do that, but it just doesn't work quite as well. The people at Woodland Scenics just really done a wonderful job of providing materials for us. You also want to get a Scenic Express catalog. Uh, they have made a business out of scenery materials and have done a wonderful job of supplying all kinds of interesting materials for us to work with. Okay, so there we're seeing what that looks like. Pretty good looking tree. If you find little spots that you need to add another sprig or two, just go ahead and add it. But work slowly and carefully at this. Okay, and there's a big gap in there. You know, but sometimes in the real trees there's a gap. And what you can always do is you can always rotate the tree around so that you have one particular side showing. Here I was trying to cover that gap and see how that I undid all that. If that were glued on there and the glue was allowed to dry, if you wouldn't have dry, you wouldn't have that problem. So be very patient when you do this. Work slowly. But you end up with some beautiful looking trees this way. Now this is an HO scale tree. If you use the 3 8 inch sisal which is thicker and has another major cord running through it, you can make a larger tree. Uh, but you can just build these up to just any size that you want them to be. And that's how our tree looks when it's installed on the layout. Makes for a very nice looking tree. Definitely a foreground tree. A beautiful little tree. Now we're going to talk about a few other tree ideas, some of them quickie trees, just some different materials that we can use. One thing I do when I drive around, I keep a cardboard box and a little saw, and what I do is I, I look for construction sites where they've torn down trees. When they rip out these trees, uh, you can go back later with your saw and cut out sections of the roots and end up with some beautiful looking dead tree uh, material just from these roots. Uh, just clean it off. You can get it wet, shake it off, let it dry out some more and you've got great material for trees or just for having dead trees. I've used this for years. Here's a little bit of a root that's on my layout. I've had that in place for oh, five or six years now and uh, just makes uh, a very nice dead tree. I just really like the effect. A lot of times people are wondering what to do for log loads. You know, what kind of material is really good for logs? Well, I find the bottle brush t tree is the best. Now, this doesn't grow here in Alaska. I have a friend in Lower 48 who uh, cuts this and sends it to me. And, you know, a little bit goes a long way, so I've probably got a lifetime supply. Looks very much like a tree bark. Now, also, when I'm out in the woods, if uh, my family and I are out in the woods doing anything, I like to carry a cardboard box around, keep it in the trunk of my car, and 
I'll just go through and gather up twigs um, just to have uh, I look for old twigs that are well weathered these are excellent for pilings for a waterfront area it's excellent for making uh, stumps out of it's excellent for using for so many different things you can use it for uh, embankments okay now another thing I like to use is this material you get it at Lowe's this is a natural fiber adjustable air filter and what it is it's a, a horsehair material again large pieces and what you can do is you can just take your uh, needle nose pliers and tear out chunks of this it comes blue so I always spray it uh, dark green using that same testers dark green that I used before and you can take bamboo skewers and just take chunks of this and skewer it on and what we're doing here is we're making background trees certainly not something you'd use up front this is just a quick way of making background trees if you want some more just tear off some more of this stuff and add it to your tree you can paint your your bamboo skewers but here just for demonstration purposes I'm just showing you how it's done you can also coat that with glue the skewer and as you put these pieces on well, before long you got a pretty nice looking background tree take your scissors trim off all those real scraggly parts that are sticking out there now you certainly wouldn't want this for the foreground sometimes you just want a lot of trees in a hurry and this is something you can certainly do on the back part of your layout with no problem at all you can use it just like that if you want or of course you can take and uh, put foam on it now another way you can make some quickie trees I'm cutting a section across this is about a two inch wide section of this um, uh, air filter material now this is not fiberglass this is horsehair and I'm just going to make some discs circle circular pieces about two inches across just going to make several of them here and this is another way to make a lot of trees in a hurry if you're not picky about how they look not all your trees are right up front and a lot of times you just need to fill in a whole forest this is a quick and easy way of doing it just going finishing up this whole strip here with these two inch discs okay so after you've got those all cut out take each one and tear it in half by tearing it in half you end up with each piece has a flat surface which was the original surface of the furnace and then it's got a scraggly surface and you can actually use this to uh, improve the looks of your trees so you just cut all those out tear them apart and we're going to impale these right on the the stick now the way to do this is to put some glue on there when you impale it on there but I'm just going to work with it here a bit to show you different things about this now it's helpful on that bottom one instead of putting the flat surface down put the uh, the messy looking surface only on the bottom one on all the rest of it put the flat surface down and then the uh, the rough surface on top and you can just space them out to where they look good after you space them out you just trim it a little bit get rid of the major hairs and everything like that and if you put glue on there it's all set to go if you've already put it on another way of doing is you can take the glue push it up a little bit add some glue around the base you can also paint these uh, bamboo skewers they don't stain very well but you can paint them move a clump down add some glue move another clump down add some more glue doesn't take a lot of glue there's not a lot of stress on these but it does just help them to hold together a little bit better okay there you go you got your rough uh, tree there again trim it a little bit set it aside to dry 
and you've got a basic tree. Now up at the top you want to put a smaller piece, quite a bit smaller. So you may want to trim this so that it doesn't really come to a peak per se, but so that it definitely does have a taper. Just impale it on the brush on your uh, tree. Trim a little bit again. And what you end up with uh, pretty quick is not a beautiful looking tree, but if you've got a lot of layout and a lot of trees to build, you've got to build them quick. And that's one you can do it, and it doesn't cost very much. These are just pennies a tree. You can build a lot of tree out of one of those sheets of material. What you can also do is just take the material if for uh, ones especially against your backdrop. You can just cut little triangles in the general shape you want, round them. You can round it on both sides or just round it on one side. And then you end up with a little tree that's just perfect for uh, gluing against uh, the back of your backdrop. You can rough it up a, get by a bit by trimming it or by using uh, uh, twisting it around like that, you end up with something that works for a very background tree, certainly not something up front. So you can use them just like that, or you can spray them with hairspray like I'm doing here. Give it a good liberal coating of the hairspray. And just really cover it with uh, the foam. Now again, the colors of the foam that you pick are just what looks good to you. This is what looks good to me. Just add lots of foam like that and you end up with uh, a finished tree in no time at all. Okay, shake off the excess. There you got a tree. Now you can do this with the other ones we made, the other quickie trees we made as well. So we just take uh, this one, this uh, little quickie, bushy type thing we made, trim it off, get rid of the excess hairs on it, and give it a spray of hairspray. Just like that. Sprinkle on the foam. That gives you another type of uh, bushy tree in the back. You can make, uh, you can actually make quickie aspens like this. Uh, paint the uh, the barbecue uh, bamboo skewer white. Uh, use yellow foam on this. Uh, you can make uh, aspens or birch real quick like that for filling in behind your your nice ones you made. And for in your very background trees, of course, any of them like this, just take a little scrap like this, spray it, dunk it in the stuff, and you're all set to go. Certainly not foreground trees, but you can make a lot of these in a hurry. One of the more interesting things that's come along in the last few years in the hobby is this Notch brand Grassmaster. This is an electrostatic device. Show it here. Shaped like a battery. It's not really a battery. It's got a, an electrostatic generating apparatus in there. Got a piece of wire that's uh, with an alligator clip on the end that you ground. Put your uh, electrostatic grass down in the container. This is what the grass looks like. This is the longer fibers. This is uh, uh, there's a dark green available. This is a light green. This is a particular color of the ones that they have available that I like. And we'll take a look at the label so you can see exactly what it is. Well, you can't read it there. Let's look at it close up. This is their Wild Grass Light Green. Another one I like is their Wild Grass Beige. And I don't use either one of these exclusively. This is what the beige looks like, like old dry grass. What looks the best to my eye is actually to mix the two of them together. So what I do is I take uh, some of the green and... Uh, Put a good chunk of the green in there, take some of the brown, add some of that, and I just uh, stir it around a little bit with my finger, just to mix it up a bit, and that's what it looks like. Okay, just like that. So we, uh, now we're going to take the cover, it's got a cover that keeps the stuff from falling out, that's the cover. 
we're going to screw it on don't have to put it on tight now we're going to take it over to the layout and we're going to do a little bit of quick grass with this now I've painted my area here this is styrofoam and I've painted it a, a dark brown let the paint dry now I've got two T-pins. It looks like one, but there's actually two T-pins there. You stick it down into the scenery. I didn't stick it into the track. It's actually on the other side of the track. And you clip one end of the battery clip on there. Okay, and the other end of that wire goes to the unit. Now for glue, I'm using Mod Podge. This is a matte medium. This is the cheapest brand that I could find here in Alaska, and it works great. And all you do is uh, you brush it on to a small area, brush it on full strength. And this is going to be the glue that actually uh, holds this grass in place. This is, uh, you can experiment if you like. This is what I found that worked well for me. It's important if you get one of these machines that you throw away the battery that comes with it and get a Duracell or an EverReady, a name brand 9 volt battery to use instead of the cheapy because my cheapy didn't work. I was very disappointed in this at first, but after playing with it, I really liked it. Now you notice that I brushed the glue right up to those T pins and actually up onto it. This works by electricity coming out of the unit. That's the on switch there. It's got a light to show you when it's on. Static electricity comes down that wire to those T-pins into that uh, glue and you just hold this above this. You don't shake it up and down. You just wave it back and forth a little bit and it sucks the uh, it sucks the fibers right out of there. It's really fun to watch this thing in action. Here's up close. See how it's just drawing those fibers right out of that uh, that canister and notice they're all standing perfectly straight up by blending the two colors like this you end up with a pretty natural color much better than if you use either one of them by itself this really is a fun device to use and you can cover an awful lot of ground in a hurry with it that's what it looks like now it'll look better after the glue dries right now you can see the white glue showing through there it dries perfectly clear and it looks very nice and that's how it looks a little further back well that's the end of the video thank you very much I hope you enjoyed it uh, have fun making trees take care and we'll talk to you next time around